First off, appreciate you guys coming out this morning. Really do. It's uh, our local media and our media mean the world to us. So appreciate you guys making the efforts to come out here and support our program and, and report the news. But uh, first off, great morning practice, right? School started yesterday. We're back in a regular season schedule with the close of training camp on Sunday. Uh, it's nice to get back into what do we call a normal routine. And so uh, obviously the guys are focused on their academics because they are student athletes. But uh, being able to do these morning practices allows them to come in, get a breakfast, meetings, practice, another meal, and then spend the rest of the day focused on their academics. But we love the schedule. The guys are actually appreciative of it. Uh, we got some good work in today. Uh, as we slowly transition to preparing for Mississippi State. Obviously, most of the training camp was focusing on ourselves, seeing how we can get better as a program and guys can get better as individuals. But uh, today, a little bit of uh, focus on Mississippi State. You know, we're not dwelling completely into it. We're 11 days out, but there also needs to be a sense of urgency as we get closer to game time. Um, feeling really comfortable with where we're at as a team. Obviously, a, a lot of preparation. Um, with 18 to 22 year olds as you get closer and closer to the game, but uh, liked where their heads were at today and the work that we were able to put in. Brian, when you started fall camp, the three main issues that you talked about was turnover margin, running the ball, and kicking game. Where do you feel you guys stand in those three areas today? Great question. I, you know, I think the turnovers, we're, we're seeing flashes of them, right? We're seeing some individuals that have completely, you know, we talk about ball carriers that have not turned the ball. We're seeing a few guys that aren't used to carrying the ball as, with the amount of reps that they're getting that are, and we've got to continue to get that fixed. And guys that are turning the ball over in practice, they're going to turn it over in the game. And so those guys will be eliminated from the rotation simply because they can't own the football. Um, you know, I think our quarterbacks are making better and better decisions. It's never been perfect. Our defense does a fantastic job of, of changing up coverages and giving us different looks. And so, you know, offensively, the quarterback's got to do a better job owning the football. But, you know, then you look back and say, okay, is the defense doing a nice job of knocking the football out, going up in high point and getting the interception? So, you know, as a head coach, you want to see a little bit of both. Um, but offensively, we, we got to continue to improve upon that. You know, the next thing you mentioned, the, the running game. Uh, I do like it. I've told you guys, look, we feel really comfortable. We got six or seven running backs that are good players that can start in this conference. But we're really honing down, all right, who are the, the two or three guys as we get closer to game time, you know, as we start to prepare the depth chart, who will get the majority of those reps. And maybe even that, right, maybe a guy that doesn't have a, a role on first or second down that may be more of a third down running back. Maybe one of those guys that we can put in the slot like a Tony Pollard that could be more of a receiving threat. So we're continuing to figure that out. Um, I am liking some of the things we've been able to see from our run game. Uh, and I think we'll be just fine uh, in that aspect. And then the kicking game, it, let's just say this, it's uh, really pleased Joe Doyle as a punter. The, the kicking game has to continue to improve. Um, with David Kemp and Chris Howard being our, our main kickers that we're focused on, uh, Noah Grant's another one. Um, but we got to continue to make strides in the right direction there. Brian, I probably just alluded to it, but as far as the depth chart and the two deep is concerned, you've still got battles for starters right now, even though we're getting so much closer to the first game of the year? Well, you know, I sat down with the coaching staff actually yesterday, and what we did is we went through the entire roster. And I think that's part of it. You, you get a feel for, yeah, you get to see it, but then you also include the special teams coach because if it's a wide receiver that may be your sixth or seventh, but, man, he's the number two on special teams, well, that guy then will move ahead of that number seven or that guy will now move to that number five spot because it's just like the NFL, right? You're only traveling so many guys. You can only get so many reps in every given week. So we've got the majority of the depth chart you know, down in our mind, but we want to understand our guys always have to continue to battle, right? We understand there's going to be injuries throughout a football season and that competitive nature. I mean, sometimes it's, hey, this guy was a one last week, but we need to see more out of him. And maybe we challenge him by putting that second string guy in this week. But because guess what? Throughout the practice, I mean, other than offensive line, you, you're going to have a rotation of guys. Uh, obviously, we don't want to rotate our quarterback through much throughout the season. But, uh, you know, we're going to be able to rotate some running backs and continue to see different things that guys can help us, especially as we narrow on the game plan. Uh, and it goes very well. Like we can talk about our defensive game plan versus Mississippi State will be very different than the defensive game plan versus Navy. So all of a sudden I could hand you a two deep for this is what I think our defense will look like versus Mississippi State. And then the next week I could hand you guys one versus Navy. I'll say, wait, was this guy not playing well? No, he played fantastic, but it's a totally different thing that we're facing. Are you comfortable at this point saying who's maybe leading in the running and kicking game battles? Uh, you know, in the running game, Look, we've we've had a handful of guys that continue to do it. You know, uh, Brandon Thomas has continued to show great flashes. You know, Asa Martin uh, is doing some really nice things. You know, Jay Ducker, you know, Rodriguez Clark, Marquevious Weaver. Those are all guys that we continue to see. You know, a guy that um, we've seen some flashes from is Andarius Coffey. And then, you know, obviously Sutton Smith's a young guy that we really like. So, you know, not necessarily in that order, but we're being able to see some of those guys that maybe we can rely on more and more. And then the kicking game, you know, I, I'd, I'd say this right now. I'd probably say that Chris Howard may have the slight edge. As far as the running, as far as the running game, with, with that, can you kind of say like of those guys who's leading? You mentioned all of them, but is there anyone kind of like 
creeping up a little bit more ahead of the other guys? Uh, I mean, I, like I said, I think it's, uh, you know, Brandon Thomas was our starting running back for those first three games last year. and He led the country in rushing. And, uh, you know, and I get it, right? We have every right to challenge the way our running game was towards the end of the year. But when Brandon Thomas is in the game, we were a little bit different. And, um, you know, he was able to, no matter what, whether it's the healthy O-line, healthy receivers blocking better, uh, Brandon Thomas has showed that he's capable of being a starting running back. So maybe that's the direction we're heading as our starter. With his ball security? Yes, I am. Yep. Brandon's done a fantastic job of, he understands that, right? I mean, that was one of those things you go back to the Temple game and, and you know, even uh, the second half of the UTSA game, right? Is That's maybe what it was. And then obviously injuries um, started to have an effect on, but I think he's been great. I think Brandon's in a wonderful spot and um, we know if he's healthy and can own the football, he, he can be a, a dangerous weapon for us as an offense. Ryan, you talked about wanting to, uh, you know, last year there was a lot of running back by committee and then you want to get away from that this year. I know you just mentioned a lot of names. Sure. Uh, are you still on track to kind of having that, you know, two or three guys that you really want to stick with? Right? Yeah, Clayton, I think that's the deal, right? I don't, this is the day and age, right? I, I was fortunate I had a guy named Kevin Smith at Central Florida that was, we, we handed the ball 35 times a game. And those are th few and far between. You don't see a whole lot of that in college football. Um, even we had great, you know, the NFL caliber guys, uh, the running backs here at Memphis. I'm not saying that we don't have that currently. We do. And, but I, I would like to have a guy running back that maybe is getting, you know, 15 to 20 carries a game. Maybe that number two guy is getting anywhere from eight to 12 based off how the game's going. And then another guy that may be getting anywhere from three to six based off what that is. Maybe that's touches, like I said, in third down. Maybe it's a guy that understands protection a little bit. But I do feel like we're starting to hone in on some of those guys. And, um, but like even, you know, in the COVID year, we played seven different running backs, right? Five different starters. So obviously we don't want to get to that point. We hope we, our, our starters can stay healthy and be able to continue to compete. Do you have a, do you have a guy in the role of, of a Tony Pollard or Antonio Gibson? You mentioned you maybe can get a guy in the slot. Which is the guy best suited with a skill set like that, that maybe he won't be tailback number one, but he'll be on the field because you want to get him the ball? Yeah, well, if, if Tony Pollard and Antonio Gibson want to come back, we'll be glad to. <laughs> I can find a spot for him. I, I talked to the NCAA that there's an extra year of eligibility out there. Um, reality, you know, you talk about the guys like, and Darius Coffey was a, a high school quarterback, okay? And a, a good runner, you know, he knew he'd go into college. We, in fact, he was our defensive back. He was on a defensive back on a roster last year. And then we moved him to running back. And he's got a unique skill set, can run those route concepts like we have. Got a lot of faith in Ace Martin, really intelligent, can do it. You can say, well, he's a really good running back as well, but he's one of those guys. And then, you know, Sutton Smith is a freshman. I keep mentioning number 15 for us. And you watch his high school tape and you'll say, man, and I'm, I'm – Certainly, this high praise, right? But he's got a little unique skill set, kind of like a Kenny Gainwell. And again, before you guys say that he compared him to Kenny Gainwell, I'm saying he has a unique skill set that way. So those are three of the names I could see lining up in the slot that could maybe cause the defense to say, okay, hey, are they, are they playing uh, three wide receivers or four wide receivers, or is it a running back? What's he going to do? Are we motion in the backfield? So. Yeah, absolutely. Jay Ducker's healthy. Uh, he's rolling. Uh, this is the healthiest he's been since he's been here. You know, had um, some you know ailments um, during the off season, and uh, even in the spring was banged up a little bit. But he's healthy and he's rolling. He's run the ball hard. Looking at the depth of receiver, are there any receivers that are kind of separating themselves from the pack at all? You know, I, and I said this. You know, I really like our depth at wide receivers. I'm not gonna sit here and rattle off the name. You guys will probably have a rough idea who the six and seven are. And then right, what the, those six, seven, eight are the, those are the guys that can play special teams that they are. Then they'll be able to travel. But look, we we know Eddie Lewis. You know, is a name that probably doesn't get enough credit. He's had a fantastic camp. And, you know, and I think Eddie Lewis is gonna be one of those stars. I don't think he gets enough praise uh, for myself included because he's done a great job. You know, without Sonny Corner, steady Eddie. I mean, he really has. He's been reliable. He's been healthy. So he'll show up day in and day out, does what we ask in the blocking game, and um, he's been fantastic. We know what Javon Ivory is capable of. Um, you know, Javon was a little bit banged up in camp. He's full speed now. Uh, and we'll like and then, right again, let's see what Gabe Rogers has. Let's see what Joe Skates has. Let's see what Kobe Drake has, Markel Jones. And so I really like the mix of guys we have in that room. I know in the spring you mentioned that um, you kind of wanted to see some more explosive plays from the offense. Looking at fall camp, are you seeing, are you liking what you see in that area? Yeah, absolutely. And, but, you know, it's also our defense is doing a fantastic job. And, and you know, we talked about the depth of the receiver. I like our depth at the, in the secondary. And so 
Um, it goes back to, all right, you want to see the defense get takeaways, but you also don't want to see the offense turn the ball over. And no, no different. We don't want to sit there. I'd be really upset right now if I was like, oh, yeah, the, you know, we had 20 explosive plays over the def- defense backs heads and, you know, ripping runs. Or, no, that would be, man, I'd be sitting down with Coach Barnes right now instead of talking with you guys and figuring out how we got to get that thing fixed. So um, it's been a little bit back and forth, but we are seeing some more explosion. Potentially. Yes, sir. Yep. With Mississippi State, what exactly is, do you get the sense that there's a, Maybe not a revenge factor, but you get the sense that you have just got to be a little bit more intense focus. Not because it's the first game, but because last year's game didn't go so well for them. So, you know, they might be having a little more edge coming in. Yeah, I don't think that's changed at all. I, I really believe our guys look at it. It doesn't matter uh, who we're playing. We know that Mississippi State's going to be a fantastic challenge. Uh, they're a hell of a football team. Um, they, they've got some uh, great players and great coaches there. And we know it, it's going to be a handful regardless. But uh, I don't think our guys sit there and say it's any different because who we're playing. I really don't. I, like I've told you guys all along, I really like the mindset and the approach of this team, and they'd be hungry no matter who we're playing. Obviously, we know that there's it's a it's a neat game, right? It's a regional game. Um, maybe because of what occurred last year, maybe there's a little bit of bad blood here or there, but our guys are looking at it. It's the very next opponent, and it happens to be our first game. And so I've really appreciated their approach. I don't think they're getting caught up in, oh, Mississippi State didn't recruit me or what happened last year. In fact, we really haven't talked much about that game last year because it has zero effect what occurs. And it's still no different, right? Everybody says, well, this occurred last year. Yes, you can learn from those things, and us, you know, we as a program will. But, again, when you talk about the roster turnover, the new coordinators, right, it's all about a new focus on game one. Well, they still have the same quarterback at least, so as far as defensively, is it kind of similar, kind of knowing, hey, we know what they're going to they're going to throw the ball out. We know their quarterback is going to throw it around. Do you take anything from that to kind of prepare at least just with the game plan? Sure. You know, right, they, look, they've got the same coordinators, right? We know what Coach Leach is going to run offensively, and we know what they're going to do defensively. I mean, their defense has been one of the tops in the country the last few years, and Coach Leach has been there. And, I, you know, I talk about, yes, Coach Leach is an offensive genius, but their defense doesn't ever get enough credit for what they've been able to accomplish. So we have a firm understanding of what they're going to do. They're also get paid to coach and, and change things up. So what exactly we saw in film won't be the exact same thing, but we know what type of offense they are. Uh, you know, Will Rogers, great respect for him. Obviously, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. And so we know what they'll bring to the table up there. With both of your guys, and more Dallas in particular, do you get the sense that, you know, knowing this is your last college football season, that this means more to them? Like, are you able to sort of see that? But I think where you see it is there's uh, they've always had Ward Dallas and guys like those, those fifth-year seniors, they've always had a great sense of pride in this program. Because every fifth-year senior that is worth their salt in start games has been offered something to leave. And these guys are committed to the program. They're committed to the university. They've been very fortunate that they believe in the, the, what we're teaching. And it's been awesome to see them. So they take great pride in being Memphis Tigers and being able to play uh, under my leadership, under this program, at this university, for this city. So guys like that, all it's, what it's done is shown that they, they feel really comfortable being the leaders because they've seen it. And they've been here for a long time. They understand what it takes to have success. And so I've been quite pleased with guys like that that uh, understand it's not necessarily, hey, the clock is ticking. Shoot, man, it, there's a sense of urgency. I just got done telling our team, there's a sense of urgency. We're 11 days away. And if you don't feel it, if you don't feel the excitement, whatever it is, whoever we're playing, right, needs to be there. But I think those fifth-year seniors, those seniors understand, okay, it's go time, and and but they've been that way since January. How has Hamilton been progressing and injury update? Yep, Cormonte Hamilton's been phenomenal. I mean, let's just say this: I wasn't sure exactly what he'd get. He played D line, tight end at Ohio State. Obviously, be able to bring him back home. I've been so pleased with Cormonte Hamilton. I mean, you want to talk about a fantastic young man, intelligent, hardworking. He does everything the right way, and guess what? He's got a heck of a motor. He's going to be a fantastic football player here. We're playing him at the defensive line. He'll move all over the, the front for us. He's strong. He's explosive. So uh, to say I've been pleasantly surprised, I have been. I really have been. It's been awesome. I mean, he's been such a joy to have around this program to coach. Um, you know, everybody, he, he's bought right into what we do, the way we do things. So he's been phenomenal. Injury update, you know, the one guy right now that will probably be done for the entire year is a, a guy named Eric Rivers. A uh, young man who flashed, uh, he, he had an off-season sh- uh, surgery, so he'll be done for the year. Uh, Bryce Edmondson, who played some for us last year, um, is a, you know uh, really a sophomore, but maybe a redshirt sophomore, is also coming off of surgery. He may be able to join us later in the season, but uh, right now those are the, the, the two main guys that were, you know, that may not be on the, the dress list or the bus list uh, to go. Brian, it seems like the portal guys are going to play important roles for you, that you really went out, you knew what you were trying to get, been pretty good so far. Yeah, and I think that's part of it, right? It's no different. If you look at any given year, if you go back to the history, right, and I always say we've got a nice blanket to look at, right, going on year seven. So if you look at the previous six years and you look at all the high school recruits, you're going to say, 
cut it in half, half of them aren't here. That's the reality of it. I looked at, you know, our last year with Coach Norvell under those guys, I think there's only four guys remaining from that previous team, right? And so that's part of it. That's just the nature of it. And so you look at the portal, you may not, and I've, I've said this all along, just because I go get a kid or we go get a kid in the portal, that doesn't mean he's an immediate starter. Right. If you could do that, we would just do that and just go, okay, let's just go get, you know, 22 starters and call it a day. It's not how it works, but we're finding certain pieces, certain niches that kind of fill us in. We're also taking guys in the portal we knew would be depth guys. I took a guy in the portal simply because if you lose, say you lose five guys in the portal, okay, scholarship guys, say you lose another five walk-ons. Well, you can't just go say, okay, we're just going to add 10 more high school guys and now bring in 35 high school guys because then yeah, you still want to, we're still going to develop high school guys and bring them in. But now you have to go look in the portal and it may be, okay, well, we lost our ninth string offensive lineman, right? That got that number nine or that number 10 guy. Well, to say I'm going to be able to go find that immediate start in the portal, it's going to be very hard. Maybe I can go find that number nine or number 10. But yes, we like some of the pieces we've been out to add, you know, just off of first. You look at the, the experience of what Joe Doyle was able to do as a punter, give him a lot of credit. Chris Howard as a kicker has been phenomenal. You go and look at uh, Tyler Murray. I mean, Tyler Murray's an NFL draft pick, and we were able to get him here as a linebacker. He's going to play a lot of football here, and uh, he's been a phenomenal Jeff, Jeff Canton. A guy that will also be able to play, uh, and we're going to constantly look and, and, and see what's out there and see where guys can help us. Yep. So forty-two percent of our starters right now. Again, you guys say, "Well, Ryan, we got the depth chart. It's thirty-nine percent, but yeah. it's really forty-one, whatever it is." You know, the, yeah. the math out, out, out of uh, is, is freshman, redshirt freshman, and sophomore. So you look at that, and, and I mentioned this on um, a show the other day, and the reality is this: like. And there's no excuses, no explanations, right? But if you look on paper and you say the best recruiting class in program history have been the last years, guess what? Those guys are sophomores and redshirt freshmen or true freshmen. Those are 18 and 19 year olds. And if that's what we've been able to do and then that's the way we're building this thing, right? When you have a 19 year old quarterback, a true sophomore quarterback, who's the only sophomore right on the quarterback watch list. I mean, that's phenomenal. So you all of a sudden take that and say, okay, you got a really good young nucleus. Then you go back to the question about some of those fifth-year seniors, those guys like Quindell Johnson, Ward Dallas, Ducksworth that mean the world to our program. Zay Collins have played a lot of football. You, you tie that in. Now you really like the core group. No, you don't want to sit there and say every year we're going to make a living out of playing a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores. But that's kind of the way we're developing this program the right way. And you guys can say, man, well, you always had a good program. Absolutely. But college football has changed dramatically. And there's only one way to do this. If you say, well, go out and then buy a bunch of kids from the portal, we're not there right now. And so we're going to continue to do it with that youth. And, and I like their growth so far. So I'm bringing that up to, to ask, um, you know, for those outside of this program, what do you feel the expectation should be going into this? Year? Yeah, I mean, I always say this. The minimum expectation is to always go to a bowl game. Our expectation for ourselves is to win the conference championship. And, and I, I will be – I won't be satisfied for anything less than that, right? We can go back to even the combo game. It still is, sticks in my stomach that we didn't win that game because we lined up to play to win the football games. And, you know, every game is a its a new season. You guys, have, there's a book called Every Week's Season. So, but every week for us, the goal is to win the game. But ultimately we say, we, we line up in that team meeting, right? In training camp, we say, okay, the goal is to win the championship. And, you know, ain't no buns about it. And that, that's what our goal should be. And that should be the expectations of ourselves. And I always say this, no one's going to have higher expectations for the program than myself, right? The players obviously have great standards that they want to hold for themselves, and I love it. Because I don't want to come out here and say, okay, hey, guys, let's just see if we can go six and six again and see what the hell. No, let's go out there and compete our asses off and see where we can get this thing and compete for a championship. Look, whatever you guys think we should be, you got the people are entitled to their opinion, right? I mean, they, and they always will be. And look, have we proven nothing we did last year proves that, hey, we should be a preseason top 25? Nothing has proven that. And so we got to go out there and prove it every single week. And But we're out there trying to prove it every single day to ourselves that we are a championship caliber team. So, uh, that's for y'all's job to say, hey, this is where Memphis is picked in the polls. This is where we think that that's OK. And that's understandable. Right. I, I, our guys have done a nice job. And I, you guys have heard me talk about this, especially during COVID, when we come in and do a uh, interview and say, hey, by the way, the Big Ten's not playing football this year. I was like, oh, well, here are my blinders. And so as we approach the season, we can't worry about all this stuff. We got the biggest thing is 11 days from now. And we got to focus on that game. And then guess what? That Sunday after I'll say, yeah, that was great. Here's some of the things we got to work on. Here's the next week to, to prepare for.
that they know, okay, we got to catch them. Yeah, absolutely. I think there is, right? It's always that sense. We had a scrimmage on Saturday. You always worry about that last practice of camp, right? That practice 15, get out there, make sure you're cleaning some stuff up. But I do think our guys now understand, hey, here we go. It's on us now, right? Training camp, and for lack of a better term, you never want to say you're just getting through it. But once you get to practice 13, 14, it's like, all right, here we go. You know, but you, you always want to push that sense of urgency. But now coming in this morning, Right. I mean, and I've used a term and they probably think, laugh at me. Bright eyed and bush jet. Let's go, man. We're morning practices. It's on like there's no wasted time. We don't have time to have a bad practice. You never do. Right. Even in January, you don't have time to have a bad workout. But our guys get that sense like it's here. Brian, it sounds like the third receiver is kind of in question. What you said, you mentioned Javon and Eddie. You know, it sounds like you know, after saying the number three receiver is kind of a battle that's up for grabs right now. No, I think all of them. Maybe if. if it, 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 we'll rotate different guys based off that. So, you know, is it Gabe Rogers? Is it Joe Skates? Is it Markel Jones? Is it Kobe Drake? I don't know. I mean, if Kobe Drake goes out there and has a better practice all week, the next 11 days, he'll be the starter. And so, you know, to sit here and say, where do these guys fall in the depth chart? I mean, it's it, – especially at the receiver, right? Nobody's going to go out there and play 85 straight reps for us. Appreciate you guys. Thank you all.